Hi, my name is Nancy, and I'm from the Teen Arts Council. Hi, my name's Rachel, and I'm from Fast Forward. What's up? My name is Shaquille, and I'm also from the Teen Arts Council. And we are here to interview Josiah McElhaney. You might hear a little bit of construction as we are in the middle of his installation um, for his work pieces. So thank you, Josiah, for coming here and attending our interview. Um, so Josiah, could you describe the glass blowing process? It goes back, uh, let's say, at least 2,000 years. Um, uh, the beginning is to essentially melt sand, and uh, a lot of the glass blowing process is essentially using people as a kind of motor or lathe. So instead of having a motor that would turn something, um, you have a, a person who's turning it. And the turning it is really just to fight gravity so that the, um, the material doesn't fall on the floor because it's uh, essentially, it's a viscous, it's a thick liquid. You're turning this rod that's holding some of it from falling on the floor, and then 30 seconds later, it's like you could take a hammer to it. Okay, also, why did you choose glass as your primary, like, medium? So glass is like this thing that you don't think about, you don't really pay any attention to, but it functions as these really uh, important symbols. It's there, it's not there, you, you don't notice it, you just see through it, you just see yourself reflected back in it. And yet, as a kind of set of ideas, it's like actually one of the most central things. So to me, I guess that's what's interesting in trying to work with it is that, um, is finding where those, I the ideas and the actual physical thing could meet. Do you like step away and then come back? What are your ways of like trying to reinvent what you're doing and like. I'm always inspired by other artwork and um, so I feel like inspiration in the sense of like feeling interested and excited about something and curious and um, is always there but then the question is like what can I do in relationship to that and that that's always the scary part you have to you're yourself you you have limits about what you can do make think invent and so um, it's, it's all about reinventing yourself every day or reinventing yourself over and over again. So does the idea of perfection ever come into play with the medium that's just so difficult to control because you can't touch it and there's just like a short time frame for you to physically change it? That's one of the most difficult things about what I do and you can see it played out in the rest of, of what I do in the sense of like these, this installation here, you know, is, is 95% metal and um, but it ended up having to be also all about perfection in a certain sense of this chrome plating and also of this incredible precision of these um, way all the objects are arranged um, and the way uh, my ideas unfold it seems to always come back to that. When you're making things you're you have to have some kind of um, uh, passion or, or, or stubbornness to get through all of the problems and the huge obstacles to actually just making anything. I mean, this um, installation, you know, was the most challenging thing I've ever done. In, in, I could go on for hours about all the crises, crises, but, you know, for me, there were crises of like, uh, oh, we can't, this isn't working, we can't, we can't do it, no one can figure it out. Um, and uh, so you, why do you go through that? So there's some kind of perverseness about being an artist, there's some kind of like audacious, like why, don't, why not give up essentially? And so I think that that has some kind of very um, uh, unconscious or, or some connection to uh, some essential part of who one is and so you can, if you if you knew all of, about yourself you probably maybe wouldn't make anything um, so the art community in Boston is omnipresent so what experiences did you share with that community as a teen and how did those experiences reflect your art when I was a teenager um, a, some a, some of my friends and people I was connected with started um, actually their own distribution systems for music. So that was like ways of, you could make a record and then there would be a small company that would send it around the country. And so this idea that like small community could be um, um, this way of like exploring the world or being part of the world. 
that's that's what I um, I, I got uh, when I was a teenager, and that's that's still something that I um, uh, that that's how I think now. Um, so this medium requires you to work with other people and have them help you with the process. Do you consider them uh, the artist as well because they helped you create it? Um, this exhibition has my name on it, and um, and yet there are literally hundreds of people involved in in the totality of what we what what is here. But I. I, I get to put forward and promote the idea that, that actually as an individual you can do something. Like as an individual you could reinvent history. As an individual you could change how we think about science, uh, how we think about our place in the world, how we think about society. The question isn't really, um, to my mind, uh, whether they're artists or not, but I would be, um, I try to talk about how like this is this crazy thing that I've um, uh, brought into the world, and yet it's very collaborative. And there's a tension there. And it's but for me, it's really that tension about um, can we only do things together, or can we do things alone? And can and 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 how do we keep that that problem alive? Because basically, mostly we're encouraged to think like, no, actually, the only thing you can do is buy things. Do you know what I mean? Like that, 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 that's the only way to be creative and that basically, and that all things are made by robots and that you can't, you know, you can't do anything yourself. And so even if it actually does take a lot of collaboration, you want, I think it's important to keep this idea alive that we, and, and something I believe that we can as individuals possibly, you know, change things. I want to know like, what advice would you have, do you have for teens who are, who want to pursue art um, well, I guess I would say that in terms of generally up-and-coming artists, I would say that to find a way to see as much art as possible and to find ways to um, be together with other people who are also interested in art in terms of like going together uh, to galleries or museums or to artist studios. And I think it's the more you can be in, um, experiencing art and feeling what it does for you, I think that that will inevitably come out in what you do. You can't, it's never too early to have a kind of big goal uh, in some sense. And it's, uh, you have to be very patient and understand that it could take, who knows, decades to get there. But I think that for me anyway, um, uh, the thing that helps you to even learn the most basic prosaic and like uh, repetitive things is, is having some larger goal in mind. Um, we just want to thank you once again for spending the time to talk to us about your artwork. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. And we'll see you next time. See you. Bye.